All right. Any questions? Okay, then we'll go here. <laughs> We're going to try. We've going to try to stay on those subjects that would be good for beginners and for our um, various levels of study. Some are ready for revelation and prophecy, and others are ready for <laughs> the beatitudes. Some are ready for the meat, strong meat, and others are ready. I trust. Amen. Some are looking for the milk. So we're trying to mix it from time to time, but at the same time, we want the class to be interesting, and then, uh, of course, we want to meet the needs of special situations. If questions come up, if you don't know the difference between the Sunday and the Sabbath day, well, you need to find out about that. You need to have an interest. There is a difference between the Sabbath and Sunday. <laughs> the Sabbath deals with the rest. Sunday is the first day of the week. <laughs> There's no Christian Sabbath except in the Spirit as the other things of the Old Testament were brought over to the New Testament in the Spirit. So when we talk about Sabbath we, on Sunday, well, we let us know we're misinformed because Sunday is not the Christian Sabbath, but sanctification is a Christian Sabbath. All right? Jesus said, Come unto me, all you that are labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. He don't mean he's going to give you a day off like the Seventh-day Adventists. And he said, out of thy belly shall flow rivers of living water. Jesus said, and when he said something about the water, he was speaking of the Holy Spirit that had not yet been given. So our rest is in the Spirit. As long as we're laboring in our spirit, then we're not getting that spiritual rest that the Bible speaks of. All right. So who changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday? You can't change it no how. If God don't change it, you can change it in your mind, but it's still not change. All right. We can change our rules on marriage and divorce, but if God don't change it, it will not change. That's right. We can change our rules on how to get to heaven, but if God don't change them, you're not going if you change yours. All right, Sister Joan, what were you going to say? No, I wasn't going in. I'm just speaking of uh, some basic doctrines that we need to learn of. And some are not really, they might read their Bible and skim over a few things, but they're not studying as to that when the question comes up that they can answer it uh, scripturally. And I say the Sabbath, as far as the seven days is concerned, is outmoded. And nobody changed it. That's just a little something there. We could deal with some other things too as we go along. But there's no day that we're responsible to keep holier than any of the rest of the days. Because holiness is in the heart now. And your heart is to be holy every day. And you can't keep a day holy any more than the next day. You keep them all holy. All right? In the Old Testament, they were talking about what? I didn't get that. Well, <laughs> they haven't. They are evidently looking for glory. The Bible said they all died in the faith. Um, there are, however, just a touch step between that. The heavenly country, we're living in it now. And they got a glimpse of it, but they didn't understand it. 
They didn't see it. That's why I'm saying they probably looked past that. Um, as David said, I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. But now realizing that there was a heavenly country before we go to heaven. And that is the, uh, the, the place where the Lord had lift us up and made us sit together in heavenly places. We have the heavenly place, but they didn't catch that. They didn't realize what they were looking at, just like John was looking uh, in the prophecy of Revelation toward the latter days. He didn't know what he was looking at. See me? The angel of the ministry showed him what he was looking at. Uh, when he saw the beast, the, uh, the harlot woman, he didn't know what that was. That's because she had adorned with scriptures. The opposition of the morning time did not have New Testament scripture. So John didn't recognize what is this religious thing with New Testament scripture. He said, I'll show you the mystery. Don't marvel at it. It's a terrible thing. So they sought a heavenly country. Scripture said, "But they that without us, they without us should not obtain it. They they couldn't get it. Um, it the heavenly country starts with sanctification, okay. and you have various degrees of the heavenly country as we continue, right, until we get to heaven. But they didn't understand the doctrines. Um, they wondered. They said they desired to look into some of these things, and were they not able? They desired to look into them." Uh, where is it? Peter? Um, all right. Go ahead and read it. What does it say? Well, to whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which are now recorded unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you, the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, mm. which things the angels desire to look unto you. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. Of which salvation of prophets have inquired and searched diligently, prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Mm -hmm. Alright, so there, they only saw dimly what we were involved in, and they didn't need to understand it. All they needed to do was preach it. They preached it, but the prophets that was given to them, and as they spoke those words, they were curious about what they were saying. <laughs> and it was revealed that this is not for you, but for us. So there were some things they skipped over. And I think they were looking for the heavenly country uh, that David spoke of. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I feel no evil, for thou art with me. Uh, he said, and I, he finished off with saying, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The fact that they probably didn't see it was the fact that the way they responded to it when it was preached. When the New Testament truths were preached, they rejected them. So they probably didn't get a real good, clear picture any more than we have a good, clear picture of heaven. We don't have a clear picture of heaven, do we? I mean, I have no idea where I'm going to live. All I know is he said, in my father's house in many mansions, I had no idea what they looked like. I don't know where they got yards, peach trees. I don't know what's over in heaven. And you don't either. I don't know where they got faucets and where you wash up in the morning like we do down here now. I don't know. All I know is there's supposed to be glory there. But I don't know. I know it's going to be good, but I can't tell you specifically, and in particular, just what heaven going to be like. And they saw concerning the New Testament church, and the glory of it and the, and the bondage it was being removed from it. But they really couldn't speak altogether clearly on what the New Testament was. That's why the Jews missed it. See, because they were too sure of themselves that it was going to be a natural kingdom. And I don't know what we're going to have in glory. I don't know. Flesh and blood can inherit the kingdom of heaven, but we're going to have bodies over there. But what kind? Glorious bodies. But what's that? Spiritual body. What is a spiritual body? It's a body... Fabricated for heaven, but I don't know just what it's like. See, I don't know what it's like. Some days I feel pretty good down here. I guess I'll feel better than that over there. But I don't know. But it won't be a corruptible body like we have. But we we can only see through a dark glass, a glass darkly, as the scriptures say. First Corinthians 13, he say we through, see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. 
And so that's where it was. It wasn't revealed to them, so they didn't know it. Christ came. Why could they? Uh, heaven was searched and earth was searched, and they couldn't find anybody to open up the plan. So they, uh, the angels desired to look down into it, and the prophets wanted to look into it while they were talking about it. And there were Jews who were uh, doctors of the law and never did see it. Nicodemus was a case in point. He didn't see it. And God was showing it right to him. He said, I'm not going to show you. You can't show you natural thing. How are you going to see the spiritual? So the church was not really revealed to those people. Uh, as it, and it is revealed. Uh, some folk don't even see it now and, and claim to be in it. If they can't see the kingdom, well, they can't say they see the church either. <laughs> he said the kingdom is within you, and that's a mystery to many people. So uh, just about this particular uh, church age, I don't think the they, they, indication are they didn't see it clearly, but they did know something about heaven. They didn't know much about hell, they, but hell was preached and heaven was preached in the Old Testament. New Testament church was alluded to, but they didn't really catch what it meant. They wanted to go on. Some of them still want to be Jews because they didn't catch it. So we thank God. And I'm just trusting what heaven's going to look like to, to the Lord. I'm just leaving that to him. I'm not going to worry about how, uh, what it's going to look like. We're going to have purple curtains or pink ones. Whether you get your own color scheme in your mansion. Hmm? Whether you get down and put on rugs or linoleum. I'm not gonna, I don't know about that. Yeah, we'll see it when we get there. They say the streets are gold. Found the gold streets in, in, in the church of God. That's a precious heavenly way to walk in. A highway shall be there in a way. <clears throat> it shall be called a highway of holiness. How are they going to understand when he's talking about the wolf laying down with the sheep and, 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 and things like that? And the symbolic language. How are they supposed to understand it? They know what a wolf is. And they know what a sheep is. But when you speak of that concern in the New Testament church, how are they supposed to understand? As people today don't know, understand what a sheep laying down with a wolf is concerned, that's the wonderful power of salvation. I mean, to take an old mean man like Paul and sit him in with Barnabas, who was a good man. And he was a wolf that destroyed the flock, and he said he was. But for you know, God had pacified him, quieted him down. He was most docile, and he was able to work with the saints, and he regretted having ever persecuted the church of God. He found out it was more precious than he thought. He didn't see it. But when God got a hold of him, he saw it. <laughs> he could see the kingdom when God got a hold of him. He fought it until then, and people are still doing it. All right. So that's what I would, I would say that they were looking toward the end of in, the, in death. They didn't receive it. These all died in faith, not having received the promise. Is God's promise true? You sure? Is it? Yeah. Well, will they receive the promise? Well, what will it be? It has to be heaven because her, heaven and earth pass away. It'll have to be in glory. All right, so Lord, help us. Thank God to strive for that. It takes a vision. You lose your vision and your hope of heaven, then you haven't got nothing to press on for. The enemy could pull you away easy. I mean, well, you just are going along because I might get in trouble if I don't. You have to have a, a vision and you have to have a hope. If you don't have a vision or a hope, then you can let go anytime. You won't even worry about it. Those that backslid, they lost their vision first. They lost their hope of heaven first. I right, just thank God I'm still wanting to go to heaven. I don't want to catch myself up on no bed growing cold and eyes uh, dimming and uh, vision uh, is drifting away and I find myself I ain't got no heaven to look forward to. And I know I'm going to die. I've never done it before. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. I believe I'm going to do it. You believe it though? Go, you believe you're going to die? you never seen it? you never felt it? You don't even know what it's like. Never happened before, but you say, I believe we wouldn't do it. That's faith, huh? Or that's a good common sense. <laughs> Anybody still living it was they? All right. Sabbath day. Well, now, that's not our subject. Could be, but it isn't too. And the father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost, and he prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who hath visited and redeemed his people. And hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Who's that horn of salvation? And he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised unto our fathers, and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he sware unto our father Abraham, 
that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Which day? Sabbath? Uh -huh. That we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Which is the holy day? If you expect the old heaven, don't you be caught <laughs> on no day that not holy. See, so we don't worry about the Sabbath because Christ already fixed that. He raised up that horn of power. And that's what the horn is, power. A power that we might live holy all the days of our life. That's right. So we, uh, there's no uh, Sabbath as far as the natural day is concerned. But then in the spiritual, there is all the days of our life are holy. How can you keep the day holy? Or how can you fail to keep it holy if you're holy? Sunday I'll keep it holy. On Monday I'll lay out my neighbor and throw a rock over in his yard. Hmm? Dump his trash over. And But I better, I'll better i get back to it by Saturday. So the Seventh-day Adventist, what happens if the Lord comes on Tuesday? And you keep it Saturday holy. What if the Lord comes on Wednesday? And you're not keeping it holy. So that doesn't make a difference. The Sabbath day has been supplanted with our sanctification. All the days, not just a day. And work does not make you unholy if it's a right work. That's why Jesus said, My Father worketh hither to and I work. So work in itself is not unholy. Right? He said that we should all work with our own hands that we might have to give to others. If you don't work, you don't eat. There's something holy about it working. So you, work in itself is not going to make the day unholy. But the fact that they had a substitute holy day because their sanctification was not available to them. Sanctification was not available to them. While the first tabernacle stood, that's what the letter in Hebrews said, that they did uh, this grace that we have. They marveled at the grace that we should come unto. And the Bible spoke of Jesus and he said, his rest shall be glorious. See, his rest shall be glorious. It was a different rest than they had in the Old Testament. Different. So, Maybe some of these days we could get into a Sabbath rest. A Sabbath rest. Well, okay, well, let's look at Let's go over here. Pardon? The, after the resurrection, after his resurrection, Oh, they didn't. They didn't stop. Well, they went. Uh, well, the, they had the uh, temple. They went to the temple worship. The Bible said, and they were in the temple. Let's go to Acts. In the first chapter, I believe it is here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Somewhere in there. Now someone find it. They were continued in the, uh, the temple. About being in the temple.
this particular subject, but that's all right. That's all right. We'll go on with it. Maybe the Lord knows more about it than I do. I said maybe. Excuse me. Shouldn't have said that. All right. They kept going to the temple because that's where the people were. But then on the first day of the week, they had services of their own. And that was the, 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 called the Lord's Day. And the difference between the Sabbath and the Lord's Day was one was Saturday and the other was Sunday. And there was no commandment to keep either one. It was custom. Is 18 and 4. That's what this thing says. All right. Certainly, if we ought to be worshiping on the Sabbath, we ought to know. If we don't worship, we ought to know why we don't. Says why did they, when they start worshiping the next day is after his resurrection. They call that the Lord's day. All right. Who else got anything like that? The Sabbath and Saturday was uh, just about synonymous. It was not Saturn was the name that was taken after the sun god later on. <coughs> Uh, Constantine generally gets credit for doing that. He was a converted pope, a converted Catholic that uh, he took on the Christianity and they unified the thinking of the people that they ought to make up their mind. Don't forget that they were in the, around in the first age of the uh, compromise and darkness and the truth uh, on the two days did not come out. If they had asked Paul or Peter or John, they would have told them. Because they came so close to telling them that they would have told them it had been a point blank answer. Paul said, I'm afraid of you because you're observing days. See? We'll worship Father's Day, uh, uh, Sabbath days and whatnot. They shouldn't have been doing it because God has set them free from it. Well, they were doing it anyhow. That's why he said, I'm afraid of you. That I bestowed upon you Grace in vain. Work, labor, in vain. All right, read it. On the first day. All right, say, well, when did that come in pro into... Um, Prominence, the fact that they did not were not always allowed to preach in the Sabbath. There come a time when the persecution set in. See? They were, as a matter of fact, run them on out of Jerusalem at one time. So they started out and they were received in the Sabbath uh, in the uh, temple. But after a while, they couldn't. So they met together themselves, and that was on the first day of the week. So the Sabbath, was, uh, having services in the, tab in the temple, ceased when they run them out. When they run them out. And then, of course, they had to lean more upon the, uh, the Lord's day. You take away the Sabbath, then what else could they do? Now, don't forget they were sent to, the, to Israel. They were sent to the lost, uh, the, house, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Jesus said that's where he was sent, wasn't he? And they were too. He said, you go to Jerusalem, to Judea, to Samaria. And then to the uttermost parts of the earth, but Jerusalem was first. And that's where the Jews were. And so naturally they'd meet where the Jews met. Jesus had done the same thing, and they'd, uh, because he kept the Sabbath. And the apostles done it for a different reason. Because they had an audience there. And that's why they went to the Sabbath. And they went there as often as they could. 
John and Peter was doing on the way down to the Sabbath, uh, to the tabernacle at the hour of prayer, temple at the hour of prayer. That's where the people were. On place they stand up to speak, they say, you all got something to say, say on. It wasn't at, the, at Jerusalem, but nevertheless, they went where the people were, and that's where you go if you want to preach the gospel to people. That's why they went to the, uh, down there. But we have clear scriptures that the Sabbath is not beyond any other day, Saturday. But the mystery is that a lot of people worship on Sunday and don't know why. That's right. They don't keep the Sabbath, but they don't know why. And that's what we don't want to be like. We don't want to say, well, we go to church on Sunday and not know why you don't keep the Sabbath day. Do you know why you don't keep the Sabbath day? Because there's no commandment to keep the Sabbath day. But all the days of our life, and that's Luke 175. Matthew 11, 28 says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. And that's the rest for you. You shall find rest unto your soul. Unto your soul. Now, we'll go back and read that in a little bit. But you'll find rest unto your soul. Colossians 2, 16, he says, Let no man judge you in regard to a holy day. Why are you not keeping the Sabbath? Don't want to. Well, you're not saved. You might say I'm not saved, but I ain't. I'm not going to say that. I'm just as, I'm living just as holy as I was when I, on the days when I do go to church. Sometimes we go to church on Saturday. Sometimes we go to church on Saturday, don't you? Sometimes we do. Yeah, fellowship meeting. Yeah. Yes, sir. Let's read this in Colossians just a moment this morning in the second chapter, Colossians. And you being dead in your sin and an uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, and have forgiven all your trespassings. You're writing to the Colossians. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances. And the Sabbath was an ordinance. That was against us, but it was contrary to us. Why was it against us? Why was it contrary to us? Because they had to enforce it. You don't have to enforce anything that people want to do. There was a law to, 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 uh, to, to, to kill them. One man uh, get, was made an example out of him because he was out picking up sticks on the Sabbath. And he was killed. They were contrary to us. And he took it out of the way Why it was a stumbling block. That's what it mattered. Nailing it to his cross. Jesus came, fulfilled the Sabbath with sanctification and nailed it to the cross. Having spoiled principalities and powers, all these Jews that hold it so high and holy and uh, laying down judgment and making people put their beds down. And after Jesus telling them to pick them up and walk, he said he spoiled the principalities and powers. The high priest, the chief priest, the temple god, lords, and all those uh, false prophets and Sadducees, Pharisees, he spoiled them principalities and made a show of them openly. When to make a show of them openly, why you heal a man on the Sabbath day? Why don't you come at six days and we come uh, on, on the, why you won't come on the Sabbath? He just uh, showed them. <laughs> Lay this daughter of Abraham, been bound in jail these many years, and you take your ox out and loose him on the Sabbath? Shall not she be loosed on the Sabbath? And they were put to shame. He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. He proved to them that he was Lord of the Sabbath while he lived. Let no man therefore judge you or condemn you in meat or in drink. Whatever meat you want, eat it. In drink, drink it. Apostle Paul could never have said that justifiably under Moses' law. He never would have ever opened his mouth to say that. Peter either. Because Peter almost had got a little discussion there. Uh, with the Lord while he's on the housetop about eating meat and drink. Or in respect of a holy door, a holy day, or a new moon, or the Sabbath days. And don't forget that that's a supplied word there, so it could have just said Sabbath period. But it says Sabbath days, which means includes all the Sabbaths, which were uh, yearly, uh, yearly Sabbaths. <laughs> Your Jubilee came in on this. Sabbath, of the, uh, the day after this last Sabbath, seven years. All right, sister, was it? Do you believe it was 50, uh, 70 years? Seven years. How long? No, no, 50 years. 50 years. That was one week at the end of the seventh year. One week. 
Seven weeks plus the next day to 50. All right. Uh, Sister Leah, what were you going to say? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And so was the Sabbath day was a ceremonial law. It was included. It was a ceremonial law because it had nothing to do with spirituality. The seventh, the seventh day did not make anybody holy. See? Putting the bread on the tables did not make anybody holy. Putting the tabernacle up didn't make anyone holy. So it was a ceremonial law. They went through a act or a show. It was for us. It was a, the Sabbath was a ceremonial law. I mean, it was not a law of righteousness that was continued. It was fulfilled. See, there were no need to continue in the Sabbath day when God gave us a Christian uh, Sabbath. There was no need to hold on to the old. Oh, that was it, yeah, it was ceremonial law. Does the brethren agree on that? You agree? Yeah. For what? I don't have scripture for any of them as far as being a ceremonial law. That's a, uh, a term that we use. But I got scripture to show you that it was not continued, that it was not a law that made a man holy. It didn't make him holy. He said keep the Sabbath day holy, but it didn't do nothing for the man. He was the same Monday as he was Friday. In other words, it, they went through a what do we call it? It was. A, it went through a form. It was a ritual. The ritualistic law, that's the same. Ritualistic law. We can show by example that it didn't have anything. Now, there was a law that said thou shalt not commit adultery. That dealt with morality and the condition of a man's heart. See, thou shalt not lie, bear false witness. That had to do with a man's heart. But when you come down to keep the Sabbath day holy, the day itself did not um, contribute to a man's salvation, except under the law, as he was because he was required to do it. But it was a part of the ceremonial law simply by the fact that it was, it was supplanted. That's how you tell. Is it still in vogue? Is it still required? Did the uh, New Testament, or shall we say, uh, ministers, did they require it? Pardon? Yeah. It was fulfilled. That's why it was not required. If you find me a scripture in the New Testament other than in the Gospels, you can find them speaking of the law simply because the Gospels were written of a period uh, under the law. Right? Those people were keeping Sabbath under the law, and the law didn't cease until Christ died. True? He said he nailed it to the cross. See, so they were living under the law, so you'll find some people keeping the Sabbath uh, in the time that Jesus preached. But at the same time, he let them know that <laughs> you're lifting the law up above the Christ that made the law. Yeah, it, it was part of the Sermon on the Law. And we can tell because it was practiced by the Jews who could not obtain to real holiness. All right, now we'll go ahead and show that it was supplanted. All right. In a little bit. We'll probably, that, see, we can read many of these scriptures in here, but until we show that what, what took its place, then people try to hang on to it. Uh, let, Acts 15 and 20. Let's go look at this uh, as a pattern that they were not supposed to be keeping things that the apostles did not command. Someone re get that for me read it while I read something else. Fifteen twenty. If that be right unto them, if they abstain from pollutions of idols, and from fornication, and from things strangled, and from blood, All right, keep reading. For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him, being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. Go ahead. Then pleased it the apostles and elders, whom the whole church 
church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, surnamed Barsabas, and Silas, chief men among the brethren. And they wrote letters by them after this manner. The apostles and elders and brethren sent greeting unto the brethren which are of the Gentiles in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia, for as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your soul, saying, Ye must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. It seemed good unto us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men unto you with our beloved partners and Paul, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have sent therefore Judas to Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that ye abstain from meats, offered to idols, and from blood, and from things strangled, and from fornication, from which, if ye keep yourselves, ye shall do well. Now what about pollution on the Sabbath? He's talking to the Gentiles. He never did give them the Sabbath law. No, he never gave them the Sabbath law. They never received it. The Gentiles never received it because when we were first given, it was given to the Jews. It was not even given to the what we would call Gentile before uh, during Abraham's day. They did not receive it until they got out into the wilderness. That's when the law came. Adam and Eve wasn't even given the Sabbath law. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob didn't keep Sabbaths. It wasn't written. The law came down from the mountain. To the Sabbath law. And so if the Sabbath was important to salvation, then Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob didn't make it. Because they were not commanded that they do that. They said they got it out in the mountain. Is that what he said? Oh, uh, that's an act somewhere. Um, so I'm going to find it where he said we received it, where they received the law. Uh, just not that we don't know where he received it, but that we don't know where they received it, the Sabbath law. <laughs> Excuse me, brother. <laughs> the spot where it says where they received the Sabbath. Yeah. It was in, 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 no, uh, in the New Testament. Yeah, no, the New Testament makes reference to it. What does it say? Does it say when? Where? What does it say? Oh, no. Thank <laughs> you ask me when I ask. Where in particular did they they say that they where they received the Sabbath, the first heard the Sabbath preach? The, the requirement of the Sabbath. That's in there. Since I didn't come particular on this subject, but we're going with the subject anyway. In the 14th chapter of Act of Romans, excuse me. That he that is weak in the faith receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. One believeth he may eat all things. Another who is weak eateth herbs. 
Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. And let not him that eateth not judge him that eateth. For God hath received him. You mean, here's a man who feel like he eat everything and God received him? Huh? You mean to tell me he's eating pork and God received him? Catfish? No, they couldn't eat catfish under the law. They didn't have no fins, right? They didn't have no scales. And that, they would not eat that. It was a scavenger. They didn't have any scaven uh, scavenger. Like a old, uh, certain uh, fish, uh, goldfish. What is a goldfish? Carp? Carp, he's a scavenger too. They weren't supposed to eat uh, scavengers, as far as I know. But anyhow, a carp is a scavenger. But I know they weren't supposed to eat it if it didn't have any scales. And I don't know what would disqualify a carp, but uh, whether they had them in, over in that area. Let him not eat that he did not. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. And let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth. For God hath received him. Which let us know that the principle that uh, Paul is preaching had given, been given to Peter in a spectacular way up on the roof. And Paul was saying the same thing. And we don't read where Paul received that vision. Up on the roof where they could eat all manner of animals and creeping things that was in that sheep. See, So revealed to, Paul, to Peter, Peter needed it in a spectacular way. He needed it evidently. <laughs> because he had been having some problem with them Gentiles. But God took away the law of what you can't eat. The one believe that he may eat all things. That's your faith? Go ahead. Another who's weak. Now, if you just eat herb, you're weak. And if you would like to have some bacon, but you're afraid to eat it because you're weak too. Not physically, such, but in the faith. You don't understand the doctrine. If you feel like that you're hindered from eating certain things because of what the Bible says about certain foods of the Old Testament, he said you're weak. So when you want to eat a pot of greens, you don't have to ask, oh, is this would be for pork? Well, you're free. It's not what inner man can damn a man. It's what I say. It's a spiritual situation. That's why Paul said nothing in itself is unclean. It's not the cigarette that's sinful. It's the man that smoke it. See. <coughs> and lies bad enough, but the one that told it is worse than that. All right. Let's go a little further. Who are thou to judge another man's servant? To his own master he stand or fall. Yea, he shall be holding up, for God is able to make him stand. For one man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Now, you know they didn't have that liberty under the law of deciding what day was holy and which way and what. Under the law, they didn't have that liberty. One man esteem a day above the other. The other esteem every day alike. So what? Well, this is Easter. So what? Well, this is Saturday. So what? Pay attention to Saturday. One man esteemeth one day above another. Other esteem every day alike. Let every man be foolish persuaded in his own mind. This is the liberty that came with Christ. Grace and truth. Either regard the day, regard it to the Lord. This is going to be my fast day. This is going to be my uh, devotion day. This is the day I'm going to shut in. We're going to pray. Well, it's on Wednesday. Why don't you wait till Saturday? Wednesday is the day for me. If he regards the day, unto the Lord. If he doesn't regard the day, to the Lord, he does not regard it. In other words, God's approval of his awning. He eat it, eateth. Eat it to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. He, well, you eat porcupine if you want it. That's right. Tell me how west they eat. They have rattlesnake roundup, and in the evening they gather around the fire and eat rattlesnakes. Just give thanks. He did, he did not to the Lord. He did not for he give God thanks. I mean, that's plain enough. I don't see why people want to argue about that. I mean, this is too plain to try to say, well, that was ceremonial law. Ceremonial law? You don't talk that way in front of Jews. No, not if they, when they, were, when they were bound to have their food kosher, you didn't talk to them like that. They had to make sure that it was kosher. So you don't, you don't have all this looseness. Uh, where the law was invoked. So I know the law has been lifted. Uh, the law of what food you can eat and what food you can't eat. You realize that the Gentiles was eat, had this liberty all along? The Bible said the Gentiles have not the law. 
Yes. That's not the case, though, because, see, he said, let not him that eateth despise him, and he is not there. Somebody doing some eating. <laughs> Might be doing some eating there. He says, don't sit at the table. Don't even sit at the table with him. Look what he's eating. Eh! Pig. That's why they did despise the people because they ate certain things. We ain't going to worship with you because you worship with certain folks, and they do certain things. We're not going to worship with you because you worship with folks that... Have music. Or, 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 we can worship y'all. See, you get back to that old kind of pointing your finger at folks. So yeah, we haven't gotten rid of that spirit yet. Uh, Paul was, was writing to Romans. They weren't Jews. He was writing to Romans who were Gentiles. He knew he was writing to Gentiles and they had their liberty. But we're Gentiles under that law. There's no Gentile except a sinner now. There's uh, uh, spiritual children of Israel, and then there's Gentiles. And he's writing to Gentiles. And there wasn't going to be a church divided, a double church, where some can eat and some can't. You can't, well, <coughs> cast out the bondwoman and her son, the Bible say. Remember? For he shall not be heirs with my son. So when... The law came in, excuse me, when grace came in, the law was put out. That's the children of the bondwoman. And the Lord said they're still in bondage with their children. Uh, Paul, they're still in bondage. That's in uh, uh, Galatians. Hmm? Yeah. She said, cast out the bondwoman. They can't live together. So they're not going to be in their two churches. One that can keep the Jewish law and one that don't have to. Uh -uh, they can't be two of them. He said, you, when the one come in, cast the other one out. She shall not be heir. Now, there was a time that the two children lived alone uh, together, right? And that was when Jesus was on earth. So spiritually speaking, that was when Jesus was here. When Jesus was here, there was a law and there was grace. The time is coming and now is. They were together. But when Jesus left, he nailed it to the cross and left the son of the free woman as a chosen people. When he said it is finished. The law was gone. And truth and grace was in vogue. Okay. Yeah. Galatians 4 and uh, 9 and 10. All right. We'll go ahead and read it. But now after that you have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn you again to the weak and beggarly elements whereunto you desire to be in bondage? Mm -hmm. that's, the, days that's the law. And months, mm -hmm. and times, and years. I am afraid of you, at least I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. Right. Paul was reproving them for doing what people today are thinking they do in God's service. He already come up and gave them freedom from all those laws and bondage and stuff like that, and they come along and still trying to do it. That's right. Ham, hock, and beans? Well, what's the matter with that? Sound pretty good. Well, that's Gentile food. In the flesh, I am a Gentile. Most of us in here are in the flesh Gentiles. Right? In the flesh. So let us eat in the flesh Gentile food. <laughs> but in the spirit, it's different. In the spirit. And there's no God don't know us after the flesh anymore. He don't know us after the flesh anymore. Uh-uh. But after the spirit. See, we can't be saved. Paul said actually later to, I mean, John. Baptist said the axe is laid at the root of the trees and then you don't leave them root in the branch. As far as the flesh is concerned, there's not root in the branch. Natural children of Abraham are not the saved children. But there's a spiritual Israel the Bible speaks of. And we need to read and run across these scriptures while we're reading. So when you try to teach the complete doctrine and all of its foundation, well, it, it just seems to not really go across to people. It's hard for them to catch it. That's why we tell you, read your Bible. Read it so you can... When we come across it in the lesson, we don't have to read all of it. I realize right now I'm looking at some blank faces that I'm not reaching some folks. Because i got to try to quote all the scriptures that back up what we're talking about. And you can't do that. 
I have to make a hard message for you to try to quote all the scriptures. See how we're jumping way around? I didn't even get to where we ought to be jumping to. But if we read the Galatians and read our scriptures and study our Bible, then, then we can get a better hold on it as we go because we have a foundation. Line upon line and precept upon precept. We're not going to be like people. And a lot of them do it. Show you a verse in the scripture and close the book up and say that's true. No, you make the Bible conflict doing that. It's, you got to get what the Bible says about that subject to make sure you have truth. I'm afraid for you. I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. If you all go out of here and start observing service I, uh, uh, Sabbath days, I've bestowed upon you labor in vain, and you'll be back in bondage again. He said, do you desire to be in bondage? Well, you watch your clock. And have to hurry. Man, you have a wreck trying to get back in the house by 6 o'clock. That's bondage. From six from sundown, I say from sundown Friday to sundown Saturday, you're supposed to be still. Don't do much. No labor, don't kindle a fire, don't do nothing like that. No kind of. Now that's bondage, you know what it is. You say you desire to be in bondage? Is that what Paul said? Galatians 4. Yeah. Who have bewitched you? Oh, foolish Galatians. He said, you're foolish. Well, who called my name? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I think they, on war days, they're allowed to fight. All they had to do was uh, <laughs> figure out where the Sabbath was and then win the battles, I think. While them folks are rested. All right. There may also be a thought that if it was that central of a, of a doctrine of the New Testament, that there would probably be some direct commandment from one of the uh, chief apostles or from Christ. It'd have been plenty of them. It had. There would have been plenty of them. There's a lot more minor of verses that are brought, spoken of more often. But the whole thought is they spoke against it. Against it. I'm afraid of you. You observing days. Under the law, they were commanded to observe days. But he said that was only a type and a shadow. It's only a shadow, a type of what we're doing now. The Sabbath day is a type, and all we got to do is prove that it is a type, and a part of the sermon in law is to bring out the real. What it was foreshadowing. That's right. I say, look, tell the folks, if you see a shadow of a bicycle, you know that's a bicycle is foreshadowing. And then when we get the real bike, you'd rather ride around on a shadow. And the shadow is not going to perform anything. It said the law made nothing perfect. Why? Because it was a shadow. You can go around riding on a shadow. You can glory in the shadow. They were glory in the circumcision of the flesh. They didn't realize that that was a type of circumcision of the heart. So they'd rather go with the natural circumcision because it's easier. Carnal. Okay. They kept glorying in the tabernacle because they couldn't see the church. And the tabernacle was only a shadow. Okay. You alright? Sabbath keeping is just ceremonial. That it couldn't even be kept uh, in all geographical locations at the same time. And even in our day today, sun up, sun down, some places longer than 24 hours. Yeah, well, that's true. From about six to six, I think they try to figure it. Um, mm hmm. Well, they would take the day they recognized as a Sabbath and keep that. But we don't know what, uh, whether our sequence of days are just right or not. All right. uh, Galatians 4.21. We'll read this and then we're going to the fulfillment of the shadow. So we'll have time. Uh, Galatians 4 says, tell me that you desire to be under the law. Do you not hear the law? Do you realize what you're asking for? 
For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondman of maid and the other by a free woman. He was the bondman woman was born after the flesh, but of the free woman was by the promise, which things are an allegory or a shadow, for these things are the two covenants. The one from Mount Sinai was gendered to bondage, which is Agar. This Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and answered to Jerusalem, which now is and is in bondage with her children. That is the natural Jew in bondage with the children. Hmm? Is that what you want? You want to go back to that? Observing foods and observing days and all that? Is that what you want? Is that what you think is freedom? You think that's, uh, that's glorious? Listen, I uh, listen. I have forgotten my own birthday. Now, I, you know, I forget some of them holy days. There's so many of them. And I, and I got to be stoned to death because I don't know why I, I changed. You ever forget your birthday? Did nobody remind you? You forget it sometimes. But you hate to see them coming. <laughs> What's this, Linda? Weaken the doctrine is actually what it means. Weaken the doctrine. Weaken the doctrine. Now they they're not. He said, "Let's go on to strong meat." You know, and they start giving the doctrines. Weak, you have to drink milk. Hebrew. If you're strong, you can meet. So he's starting to weaken the doctrine. When Paul said, "I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith," he means he have kept the commandments of God. The obedience. You know, he hadn't uh, gotten off into some heresy. And yes, if you try to hold on to that which was keeping you from being unsaved after you get saved, well, that's sure it's going to be a hindrance to you. For instance, if you believe in tongues and God show you and save you out of that mess and you keep trying to speak in tongues, you've got a problem. You believe in keeping the Sabbath and God save you and you're still trying to keep the Sabbath. He said, well, you've got trauma. He said, you do run well. Who did hinder you that you did not obey, should not obey the truth? This persuasion come by, not by him that calleth you. A little leaven, leaven the whole lump. If you mess around with the law, the Bible say, listen, if you keep the whole law and offend at one point, you're guilty of the law. See? You know, you broke the law. Your tub can be completely intact, and then you take a nail and put a small hole in it. He said, well, you've leaked the tub. If you believe in the law, say you're going to keep the law. Moses gave the law, amen, by command of God. And then God removed the law, and you're going to keep the law. Well, then you got to keep it all, he said. you got to keep it all. If you don't keep it all, you're offended and you broke it. You broke the law. Let's go, before we get into much on here. We have been dealing with some, some negative uh, approaches to it, to the Sabbath. When he says, I'm afraid of you for keeping those days, I'm afraid of you for keeping, for observing these Sabbaths. See? First day of the week. What day of the week did uh, John receive the revelation? First day or the Bible said the Lord's day. Now someone will interpret that and say it says the Sabbath day. No, it didn't. It didn't say the Sabbath day. It said the Lord's day. And you won't find the Sabbath ever being called in the Old Testament by Lord's day. Mm -mm. Let's go to Hebrews and let's get it the antitype. Whenever there's a type of the Old Testament, then you get the antitype on it. The antitype means the 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 real the action the real the uh, substance the shadow is the antitype what we want to do is get to what made the shadow the law the truth and grace came first but it was not given to us first it was not given to us first but it was first the truth that was before the foundation of the world was the new testament was first and it cast a shadow of the old testament why didn't it give the new testament first 
<laughs> a man was carnal and he couldn't have nothing to receive it with. He had nothing to receive it with. He couldn't understand it. it. The Bible said the Old Testament was given only as a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. But Christ was the plan in the first place. He's for this end that I come into the world. He was in the plan way back before the world was for our redemption. And so the New Testament was first, but it uh, was given last. Okay. Can you understand it? So that's why how it cast a shadow. The light of the gospel showed, shined on the New Testament and it came out as a shadow. And so that was given to give us an indication of what we're going. But the shadow was not as we, uh, even that word shadow is a symbol. Because in other places it's called other things. Like, well, someone said blueprint. That's not in the Bible, but that's sort of like it is. In a way to speak, a pattern. What else? Hmm? Forerunner. John was a forerunner, but he wasn't. Old, he was Old Testament. Uh, he was a Old Testament minister, John the Baptist. <laughs> and if you want to speak <laughs> technically, but really he preached grace and truth. But he was born under the law, same as Jesus. All right, we're going here to the uh, third chapter of Hebrews, and let's get the essence of what throws the shadow. All right, begin reading the sixth verse. But Christ, whose son over his own house, whose house are we, if we hold fast the confidence and rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, today, if you will hear his voice, voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me and proved me and saw my works forty years, wherefore was I grieved with that generation and said, they do always err in their heart. In their heart, see, they didn't have pure heart purity. And they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you, any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. The writer says you got an evil heart when you depart from God. <laughs> but exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through deceitfulness of sin. Now remember, he's writing this book to the Hebrews. He's reinforcing their faith. These are the Hebrew converts whom the Judaizers were trying to overthrow them. Judaizers was in and putting other things in the ears. That's why he said in Galatians, who had bewitched you that you would not believe the truth? Amen. He said you start out, amen, in the spirit and you're going to switch back to the flesh. So he's warning the Hebrew converts here that this is a new and a living way, that this is a better and a way that came within by Christ. Does any of you be hardened through deceitfulness of sin? For we are made partakers of Christ if we if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. While it is say today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. For some, when they heard, did provoke. Howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses, but with them, whom was he grieved uh, forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest? But to them that believed not. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. You're talking about a Sabbath day. Let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. What the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest. So this rest is by faith and not by a certain day of the week, right? See what it says? For we which have believed do enter into rest. As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place of a seventh day. Now he's putting sanctification and seventh day together on this wise. And God did the rest of the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Again, he limited a certain day, saying in David, 
Today, if after so long a time, as it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, for if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day. So the rest he was speaking of was a day of a temporal rest for the natural man. But that's not the rest that God entered into because the first place he said he ceased from all his works. And he's speaking of the works that are uh, the temporal, the natural, the works of creation, which was for us. You hear his voice, harden not your heart. They didn't enter into the rest. Anybody that doesn't enter in by faith is not entered in. Now, I don't mean what day of the week you try. If it's not by faith, you can't get in. And don't take no faith. So you can go to a place where folks are gathered together and everybody go to bed. But you have not sanctified. You haven't entered into his rest. His rest. Christ's rest. The Creator's rest. That's the rest he was talking about. You haven't entered in there. Uh -uh. Well, listen, bums and crooks, they rest on Saturday. Ali Bab and the 40 Thieves might have got back in that cave, man, and rested on the Sabbath. Anybody could rest on the Sabbath. That don't make you holy. Hmm? Does it? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy? So if you want to keep the day holy, just get back and pull the cover over your head and stay in there until tomorrow. Does that make your day holy? No. Now see, when the Bible spoke of the rest, he said his rest shall be glorious. That's not glorious rest. All right. If Joshua, this is actually what that means, Savior, had given them rest, then he would he not afterward have spoken of another day? If Joshua had given them rest, they took them into the Canaan land. If He's the one who took them over. It wasn't Moses, you remember. If Joshua, by taking them into the Canaan land, had given them rest for their soul, would he have spoken of another day? They had Saturday, and they had the Canaan land. How come he speak of another day? There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that has entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Does that sound like something that happens on Friday evening? Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, Lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Does that sound like Sabbath rest that he's talking about here? Does it? Listen, Friday evening, man, a guy come on in that chair, he ain't got time to get in the bed. He's already snoring laying up there. Whew, especially if he worked hard. You don't think no labor into rest. When you rest, you <laughs> not literal, not natural rest. He's not talking about that. He's talking about rest, the holiness that sets into the soul. But how can you see it? Most people like Nicodemus. They don't even know. I have no idea what he's talking about here. And he's talking about the Sabbath as compared to the spiritual rest. For he that has entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works as God did from his. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Does it take faith to go to sleep on Friday night and then sit in your room and uh, abstain from pork on Saturday? There's a difference between these two rests, don't you see it? I mean, can you see what the rest that God is talking about for the soul? In other words, a sanctified soul that is rest from his own labor. So you have to watch doing your own labors. You let people know you're not sanctified. When it's me, 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 me. When you're weeping and crying over what you can't have and how people mistreated you, you don't, you're don't. not resting, you're worrying. Your rest is disturbed by what somebody said about you or what somebody done to you, and you can't even rest. Jesus was resting right at his trial. And he said he asked a certain other word. <laughs> he spoke only in defense of the gospel. And that's what we want to do. He said they rest from their own labors. Now, I'm not saying you can't say anything in defense. I don't get me wrong on that. But I'm saying you can't get carnal about your defense. Why? Because carnality is out of a heart that is pure. He has ceased from his own works as God did for him. Let us labor to enter into that rest. Lest any man fail, fall after the same example of unbelief. 
For God, the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of sunder of soul and spirit, and the joints and the marrow, and the discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is any creature that is not manifest in his sight. All right. For we which have believed, the third verse said, do enter into rest, we which believe. There was only two of them that even come near and believe in entering into the natural rest. Joshua and Caleb. They believed. And they went on over into the Canaan land and for the milk and the honey and the grapes. But however, when we sing about come on over into the Canaan land, honey and grapes and wine and stuff like that, we're speaking of spiritual food. Don't you remember the Stephen priest? Uh, what was he? He filled our hearts with food and gladness? Do you think he's talking about he filled our hearts with natural food? Hmm? Y'all know that song? Come on. Oh, who's got something to say? I also A consecration. It takes a consecration to be to enter into that rest. You can't rest when you're worried about your stuff. You're worried about yourself. Oh, number one is occupying your time. You can't hardly rest. You got to go run down rumors and go see who it was that said what about me. See what I mean? Make sure you get in line so I can get mine. Yeah. Well, that's what this, see, that's what's funny about it. Under the law, you didn't have to be saved, sanctified to keep the law. All you had to do was make a mind do it. You did not, you went to heaven under the law if you kept, if you didn't get caught. I'll put it, I'll put it this way. You were born, circumcised the eighth day. That made you a member of the church of the Old Testament. I made you a member. There was nothing else required of you except that you don't slip up and fall. But as far as heart purity, they didn't have it. They didn't have it. Acts 14 and 17. Yeah, somebody can get that. We had neighbors around that lived down a mile away, and they were farmers, and they were dairy farmers. And on Saturday, they put a fed milk out there, and they can't pick up milk on Saturday morning, Saturday evening. Yeah, well, they're allowed to do that under the law. You're allowed to do works of mercy. In case you don't know it, then you don't milk a cow on time and that cow's messed up. That's why I don't get in a long vacation. You can't just decide to milk that cow. supposed to be milked on Saturday morning. You can't decide to milk them on Sunday evening. You can't do that. Because the milk pressure builds up and it won't come out unless you milk them. So you can ruin the cow that way. They have to be milked on time. And they were allowed to, uh, to take the horse out for uh, the cow out for water. And they were allowed to milk the cows for the cow's sake. So, right. You can't skip it. <laughs> it runs at a certain rate. And it will keep on coming. Originally, you know, that milk was made for a calf. And the calf is steady. <laughs> or he'd be fasting sometimes. 
All right, what does it say, Acts 14, 17? You saw my stuff and put food in the heart. I'll read it. So I'm saying there's, when he's speaking of the land of milk and honey, when he's speaking spiritually, don't you ever realize the man that said that was not thinking about folks stuffing natural food in his heart? What does it say? Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness and that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons filling our hearts with food and gladness. Mm -hmm. All right. A seventh place, if they shall enter into my rest. Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached enter not in because of unbelief. Again, he limited a certain day, saying, And David, today, if after so long a time as it is heard today, say it today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. For if Jesus had given them rest, then he would not have afterward have spoken of another day. This takes some reading, but I think maybe you could get you some books out of the library and uh, read along with this and kind of get... Uh, now, this is deep. As Paul said, uh, <laughs> uh, Peter spoke of Paul sometime. If this is Paul, I don't know who he is. But anyhow, it speaks some things hard to be understood. This is not so hard to understand that the, that the Sabbath rest is not what God had in mind. That's not so hard. That's not hard. It certainly contrasts that. All right, uh, Hebrews, uh, excuse me, Isaiah 11 and 10. Um, and I want you to look at it. Now, on this one, I want you to look at it yourself because you're going to have to face this. You come bring your Bible. You come Bible study with no Bible, no pencil, no paper. If you need glasses, don't even have them. Can't see. What does it say? Right, 11 and 10. Well, I'll read above that. Uh, 9. <laughs> they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse. Who's that? Mm -hmm. We shall stand for our inside of the people. To it shall the Gentiles see. And his rest shall be glory. See that? What was, the, what was the matter with the Sabbath rest? <laughs> Wasn't the glory because they were just bad in them tents on the Sabbath that there wasn't any other time. He said, but the rest he gave, he was contrasting the Christ's rest with Moses' rest. There was no glory in Moses' rest because it was against them. They didn't want to keep it. Folks, you, the folks who keep the Sabbath, they don't want to. They don't want to. They're just under some false uh, idea of what truth is. They don't really want to get. They don't want to see Sabbath coming. They did none of the law, and they don't now. All right, Sister Robin. <coughs> yeah. Sabbath, and other lean on circumcision, and other lean on this type of doctrine. 
What you don't eat is not going to put you in heaven. And what you do eat, you can't go to heaven by what you eat and don't. Because the kingdom of heaven is not... What? Me and drink. What's the kingdom of heaven? All right. If it wasn't for this... Third and fourth chapter of Hebrew, we still wouldn't have to keep... Because it just won't fit in. It doesn't accomplish anything for man. It doesn't accomplish anything for his soul to hold the Sabbath up as so holy. Well, in the first place, God requires us to keep each day holy. And so we have enough scripture without that. But this is the fulfillment of it, and that is go on to perfection, not laying again a foundation of dead works. And that is sanctification is our rest. His rest shall be glorious. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God, right? Glory generally speaks of the absence of sin. Therefore, the second work of grace is necessary. See? Why? Because we still have the carnal nature, what we call sin in the flesh, and actual sin, committed sin. People say we're not responsible for Adam's sin. Maybe not. But you're responsible for retaining it. The nature. What is glorious? He shall be an ensign to the people. And that is the flag or the standard. And to him shall the Gentiles seek. And I got saved. I was seeking for the ensign. I didn't know anything about this scripture. But I knew I didn't want to be saved like other folks were saved that I knew because they were sinning. My buddies sinning. And they was accepted in Sunday school. That's right. And they were no different from me. And I was... They were sinning more, worse than me in many cases because I had a dab with a long switch and I had to restrain myself. But I was the same in my heart. I mean, I wouldn't say it. And they weren't either. But all they had to do was join. And I didn't join. I never belonged to another church. I come to Church of God. I never signed up for no other one. Why? Because as uh, some of the Sunday school teachers and others are careful to bring the little children to church, you learn stuff that way. That helped me. Those people take me to Church of God. They take me to Church of God to the Mission down on Main Street. They take me sometimes go to Innisfallen and sometime on Liberty Street. I'd get in there sometime in the homes, holy women in the neighborhood. They gather all the children in and they tell us some things. And they don't maybe don't even know what happened, but that uh, that affected me. That affected me. I knew some things that you couldn't do. I'm not as ignorant as some of them children that didn't go. I sit there and I'd be tired sitting in church. My feet be just swinging and I'd be restless. Sometimes they give us a sucker or something, you know, kind of placate our boredom. But I went because they asked me. Sometimes it seemed like to preach so long. But I learned something. I learned something. And I, I thank God for those good days. And now that, they preached on the street corner. The old ladies come out there. I think Grandma Burton might have been one of them. I don't know who all they were, but they preached on the street corner. And I heard the gospel preach, and they didn't laugh either. They were laying it down, judgment to the line. You know that song that Sister Green sings? Oh, my record. They preach it sober. Shall be there. And I don't stay safe. But the Sabbath day don't do not, didn't do anything for them people. Yeah? It didn't do anything for them, but make them restless. But he spoke of another Sabbath. And wherein the rest would be glorious. Sabbath in the soul. Since the message of, as someone have already mentioned, of keeping the Sabbath was not preached. It was not made a requirement upon us. Then we have many of them that omitted and eliminated the Sabbath in their preaching. And then we have the fulfillment of it is a rest for the soul and not for the body. Rest in the body just gets you up and do some more sinning. Rest for the soul, you cease from sin. For the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of those things can never with those sacrifices which they offered even the Sabbath year by year continually make the comers there unto perfect. For then when they have ceased to be offered because that the worshippers once purged should have had no more conscience of sin. But in those sacrifices, there's a remembrance again made of sin every year. 
So, were there any questions or any additions? About, yes. The captain, the commands are kept in heaven. Oh, I see. So everybody rests in heaven on the Sabbath. <laughs> 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 Probably the Sabbath day, huh? <laughs> Let no man judge you in respect of a holy day. One man esteem every day alike. One man esteem a day above another. Whether you esteem it or don't esteem it, he said, let no man judge you in a holy day. Where was that written? Didn't we just read that? All right. That was Romans 14. Romans 14, so you don't worry about the day. All right. And uh, Galatians said that the law was cast out, the bond woman and her son. Then we have uh, Colossians. He say he took those things out of our way. They were stumbling blocks to our faith. Stumbling blocks to our faith. Try to keep the that was under the old law when they could not have holiness. So they couldn't keep the day holy. No how they couldn't keep themselves holy. They had to keep the day holy. And abstaining from work is not what we use to keep the day holy. See that was put in there, but we're commanded to work. If work makes you unholy, then we're in bad shape because we're commanded to work. That's right. And if rest will make you holy, there's a whole lot of holy folks around that are probably not going to be saved. Because they're too lazy. They do too much resting. Can't get them to go to work. But they need rest. And if rest makes you holy, then that's good. But he said, get up and go to work. That's right. So, by these things, we know that it was a temporary situation, as the Bible said, to lead us to Christ. Sabbath day. Now, I don't think some of you folks shouldn't have came here tonight if we got to keep the Sabbath day journey. See, there was a lot of laws that went along with the Sabbath. It was not just a matter that you had to stand, but some other things you had to observe. As the lady, uh, the girl was saying back there about you're not allowed to cook on the Sabbath or do anything like that, so you had to do it all on Friday. See? No, you can't kill on no fire in your houses. Now, people would freeze to death in <laughs> Canada and around here, too. Because they didn't have thermostats, you know, and it would have been work to reach up and flip it. You'd have to turn the thermostat on Friday and leave it alone. You had to stay all the weekend. We turn ours down at night. No, it's labor. Can't do that. You turn it out. Leave it up. If you've got to turn it on, it's suffer it out. That's the way they did with the, with the Sabbath day. And not only was the Sabbath day Saturday kept, but there were other Sabbaths that had to be kept. And they were all in, uh, in the same Mosaic law. And we don't keep any of them. I don't know when the last time I enjoyed a good jubilee. <laughs> Except when I got saved. When you get sanctified, that's your jubilee. And it lasts. Okay, well, if nobody has any other things to add to it. If you didn't understand, understand this one thing. That it's nailed to the cross. Nailed to the cross because it had no uh, practical use in the New Testament church. When God gives true holiness, you don't need that imitated holiness. And the Sabbath day was imitation, a shadow. When you, God makes available the real, you don't need the imitation. That's why we don't have to go through circumcision as a spiritual rite. That's why we don't have to bake bread and put it on the altar as a spiritual rite. And I say rite, R-I-T-E, ceremonial rite. All right, the Sabbath. It's fulfilled in Christ. Pentecost, <laughs> the Sabbath came to those who were in the upper room. The Pentecost came and brought the Sabbath. When the day of Pentecost fully come,
That was the end of the Sabbath for them. Oh, yeah, they still went to church. You can still, I'll go to church, too, on Saturday, too, when we have church. All right, Brother Roger? Mm -hmm. 50th what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah.